back. Hopefully, our mic is working pretty well, looks like, at least by the levels. Um, and our webcam seems to be back. So let us know. Yes. So right now, I am drawing your D&D &D characters, obviously. Um, and uh, I'm going to be drawing Douglas Dennis from the Wubby Fan, uh, who is an elderly halfling white guy with a receding hairline. He's got a purple suit with a gold pocket watch, and he looks very enthusiastic. He's named after the Rules Lawyers video. So while they were fixing the audio and things, um, I started drawing this in sketch form so that we could get going. I'm kind of trying to picture him like putting his uh, like hands in his suspenders. I'm imagining him with suspenders, uh, but I don't this know what that looks suspenders. like. Like how did how do it look when you have suspenders? But usually you like, go like this, right? Yeah, it's like they're, 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 everything. The like, suspenders are under constant tension because it's like something that's not quite long enough to go from like the front of your hip to the back of your hip, but it's a little bit elastic, so it holds your pants up. So when you're stretching it out, it's like a, a bowstring, but. It's suspenders. It's like if you could shoot your pants like an arrow. That's a strange thought. Oh, I got it! That's right. His arm needs to go way out. This, if I, I may give up on this pose, um, but you can see his uh, middle-aged whiteness enthusiasm, hopefully, from this pose. It's like this. Chat saying anything? Uh, well, my salesman said he was back with no audio, but I have audio, and so he's refreshing now. Why would you make your name also Steve too instead of also also Steve? So like, I think when Twitch like first came out, I made some account called also Steve. Mm -hmm. It's fixed now. He says so we're good. Yeah. And because that was like my name on everything. Yeah. And like I forgot that password, and it wasn't connected to my like. I think I connected to my like tech mail. Nice like this idiot. Because then that goes away. So uh. Yeah. So I had to make a new one. But for... but it could have been also also Steve. Okay, so like in League of Legends, I was also Steve, right? Yeah. And then my friends, my friend uh like made it a goal, and was like, I'm too good to play with you because you're still in bronze. Ha ha ha. You can only play one rank up, right? Right. So he made a Smurf account and named it um, the real also Steve. Oh, okay. And then um, somebody else um, has like made their account like uh, I'm Steve uh, to play with me. Nice. And then um, I have another friend whose name just happens to be Sergeant Steven. And so like sort of just accidentally like a four man that all just has Steve in their name. <laughs> there is unsurprisingly. A Steven Universe episode about this. Great. It's called Steven and the Stevens. Steven and the Stevens. It's not very good. It's, ah. not, it's, a, it's a weird one. Anyway. Allow um, me to select. I appreciate your Stefanic so, culture. I have a way better screen name now, and in, in every game I play now, mm -hmm. I, I'm Manor Rick Flair. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's a really it's good name. Good. That is, like, such a good name. It's great. It's funny, like, so this is, it's... So Jamie's uh, gamer tag is always Yo Jam Jam. Yeah. So there's a, a an old Yo Yo company called Yo Yo Jam. Yeah. Uh, there was like of everybody's course. first Yo Yo. Like is it, was, it? It was like a like the forty dollar like so you want to spend some money on a Yo Yo but you don't want to go full one hundred twenty dollar uh, bimetal aluminum and brass yet right? Like, I was pretty sure mine said Duncan on the side of it so you know. Uh, there that works sometimes sometimes that's fine. I think it cost oh. me like six bucks. It should only cost you three. At the Scholastic Book Fair. You got, you got oh, dupes. Oh, nerd. Like, it might have come with a spy gadget. Uh, because They should pay you for those. Everything comes with a spy gadget at the Scholastic Book Fair. True. Any case, since his name is Jameson, he like said, I know, well, Yo-Yo Jam went under. That's the big news. Yo-Yo Jam died. Um, mm -hmm. So now he's Yo-Yo Jam Jam, and he just freaks people out on Twitter by uh, accidentally making them think that well, semi accidentally making them think he's Yo-Yo Jam. So I think Manor Ric Flair is very much in the same ballpark. Manor Ric Flair is a great, oh, it's so good. It, it like it, it just captures everything. His head needs to be at a different angle. I kind of wish. I, so I made my name like Sir Stiffy like just on the spot, 
when somebody asked me for my uh, my aim name in junior year of high school. Sure. And I did not have an aim. So I just said something, and then, of course, rushed home to make one. Um, yeah. And so I just said, whatever. It was, it was, I mean, I don't know, can aim names be taken? I mean, geez, I, that would have been... That would have been crazy if Sir Sishney was taken. Right. If somebody else, I could have just... They could have had a long and storied pen pal ship with somebody else entirely. Oh, he's got anyway. a receding hairline, though, so he can't be doing this pose, so I can show it. Okay. Is Wubby Fan on this chat? Wubby think... Fan, you here? But... Um, now, literally everything I've ever done is, is snippy. So, like, changing it would just be... Is Daily Dark Lord Wubby Fan? I don't know. Because he said, yeah. That's all I mean. Okay. I'm a one yeah kind of guy for yeah. conversations. Actually, uh... Yup, he also said yup. Hmm, do you like it so far? What do you... Any... any well, I, you know, I can't ask... I can't keep asking people to, to change my art. But it's your art, too, so... I am that guy. I am that guy. What? There's a Lizzo song about this. Uh, have you taken a DNA test about it? Uh, no. I'm You're 100% that guy. Sure. <laughs> You're that guy. Like, I am probably that guy, but I do not have a scientist. This guy right here that, that I'm that drawing? I mean, I've got a, a new photo with the bomb lighting. I'm excited to draw Good. hairy feet. Yeah. Allison makes sure of it. She does look Allison like, uh, does do bomb the photos. Winter princess, uh, the spring princess, like, light through the uh, little baby hairs. Have you seen that, like, terrifying, uh, like, glamour shot she took of me, like, like forever ago? I don't think it, so. Like, it, like, makes the rounds every now and then. It's gotta. Um, I think we all collectively forget. It is our art. <laughs> what did you guys do to get requests? A Twitter post or something? Yeah, yes. this time we did Twitter. I also took uh, through my Instagram. I do believe this time, it, yeah, it was twice. You It's our no. art USSR theme place. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you don't like it was twice? How about we twat it? Ian, stop profaning my stream. Um. That's just a simple conjugation. I do love the Robbie Rotten is a communist. Have you seen that video? He is number one. He's in fact number one. There's like a clip. You can't have a classless society if there, you are number one. There is a clip from Lazy Town where he is running an ice cream shop stand thing, mm -hmm. but he is also the he's also patroning said ice cream stand. Okay, yeah. yeah. So like the chess like uh like the chess Cheers short game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he gets handed a comically large ice cream cone and asks how much it costs. And then he tells himself, of course, with a fake mustache, as the ice cream man. Uh, nothing is for free. And then they just play the USSR theme <laughs> as he laughs. And he, like, of course, it's Lazy Town, so nobody moves naturally in that show. No. They wanted the people to move like puppets move, so he laughs with, like, all of his shoulders. Right, like a Oreo laugh. Yeah. <laughs> that clip is so good. Yeah, see, I've got somebody else. Democracy is not negotiable. Better dead than red. Oh my god. I mean, not that that's a bad statement. Do halflings have pointy ears, like, slightly? Why not? I don't think so. I think they got nice, roundy ears. I like that hair. Thanks. But I think it's gone now. Yeah. He's it got is. receding hair, so... It has, re it, it has done recede. Recede's bends. Um, so I let's did do it like a so. 43-year-old man... Yeah, in D and D, just complain about your back problems the whole time. Uh, he was an he was a warlock of the Undying patron. Uh, now I noticed that like so if the the patron is Undying. Is the warlock dying? Uh, not if you continue, you become less dying. You become less dying. Okay. Right. Um, the Undying is the patron. Uh, I had him. Uh, he just like. His wife had recently, like, uh, either died or left them. I don't remember which one at this point. And, uh, Good so... Good strong motivation. Huh? Good, well-developed, deep so, motivations. Yeah, so he was going through his midlife crisis and realized that he had just been, uh, working in a tailor's shop his entire life. When he could have been Eldritch blasting fools. <laughs> exactly. And so he, like, grabbed the decremental, like, saber over his mantle and, like... Uh, vowed like uh, an oath to the undying that he was going to make his life worthwhile. I understand now that when you say decremental, you mean decorative and ornamental. 
But I kind of thought it was like a Star Wars lightsaber material, so I'm like, okay, I'll figure out what this is in a second. Necromental? Like, yeah, like, like, haven't you ever heard that, like, like Yaddle's well, lightsaber is made of decremental? Well, like, like, there's decorum, right? There's decorum, yeah. Right, so, uh, <laughs> if you are essential to the decorum, you are decormental. Decremental? That's detriment. Okay, alright, I can, I can get behind this. How do we like this face? How are we doing with the face? Halflings look terrifying. I like this face. This face is smug. This face knows what he it wants. He says he's enthusiastic, right? Mm -hmm. What are there any other character traits that he? Uh, he says yes. Fine? That hair is awesome. That was yeah. Awesome. Uh, more smug. He says on the face. Okay. Uh, as a as a reminder, our prompt here is elderly halfling white guy with a receding hairline, purple suit with gold pocket watch. Looks very enthusiastic. Named him Douglas Dennis after watching the Rules Lawyer video. That's that's what it says. To make someone more smug, I think you give him more of a lower eyelid. And you you thin out you you pull the lips backwards. I'm so happy I was able to take one of my favorite like meme videos and and make it a D and D video. Oh. It's just it's a great great sketch. One of our best. The D and D and D law Dennis. The Morgan and Morgan and Morgan and Morgan. Mm, yeah. I think it's coming along nicely. I'm trying to give him like a pointy He's out hobbit nose. Basically based on the 12th Doctor's Lego minifig. Oh, oh right, 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 right. what? Okay, someone pull yeah, that up for say, me. Like, when, you, when you did the, the, the eyeshadow thing, it kind of you kind of went from like smug to landlord. Oh, he does look a little evil. Oh, that's fine though. He is Douglas Dennis. <laughs> Where'd it go? What'd you do? Yeah. I've done nothing. Discord. Discord. It probably can you still. Fix it? Yeah, well, I I can see it over here though. It's still on the stream too. Okay, good. This sleeve could use a little work. It interrupted me to say it wasn't gonna start. It was gonna interrupt me anymore. How rude. Halflings are all a little evil. Uh, I believe you will find that there is the good man Lem. He's the iconic bard in Pathfinder, and he <laughs> is great. He's wonderful. He. Uh, frees halflings from slavery, and he's not why a would creepy you, bard. Why would you slave a halfling? I, it's a really con. You know what it is? Real easy to move around. I guess so. Twice the twice the product. But it's same like, wagon. It's like here. how much labor is a halfling? Yet? Like unless they're doing something like they're very me. eager. Like if they're, you were like running uh, illegal. Uh, this looks really me. similar. <laughs> they're sturdy people. <laughs> They got the, they How got did I do that? It's because I'm a genius. Like, <laughs> they are too lucky to enslave. Like, you are really playing with fire. Like, eventually, like, they're right. going to hit, like, a luck thing is going to happen, and it's going to, yeah. like... It does seem like... Yeah, because they're time, extraordinarily lucky, right? Like, in, in horrible countries where this this happens, um, the number two, the number one and number two professions for all halflings are um, uh, slave and... Uh, uh, Escaped a slave now leading rebellion. So like and then at certain point those like just by by the way that numbers work Those two have to, like switch places, right? And then you're in trouble <laughs> Like so people either way. How do people wear pocket watches? Okay, I know the answer to this Where it's, can you see the pocket watch when it's being worn? Yeah, so um you have this thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you so you have a pocket watch pocket on your waistcoat um, and uh, what you do is you have essentially like a cross chain that, that connects to like buttonholes on either side of the waistcoat. Mm -hmm. And then you will have another chain that hangs down off of it into the pocket watch pocket. So like you wouldn't be able to see the pocket watch. Is that I think what you just said? Uh, you probably wouldn't see the pocket watch unless sometimes the pocket watch uh, pocket is like really right like front and center and then you kind of see it tucked in. Um, but you also have an, uh, another chain going the other way so people don't know which side your watch is on because it, symmetry is cool. This has a lot thinner lines than the other drawing, but I'm liking the sketchy quality, actually. Yeah, I think it looks great, actually. I don't even think I need to do a second line drawing. I think this one's pretty solid. Did you give him the halfling feet? I did! Look, he's got hairy feet. Oh, man, the hobbit feet. There they I are. think I just need to go in with a bold line, and then I'll be good. I like how, no matter what, uh, uh, neither neither Paizo nor Wizards can have hobbit. <laughs> right. I, saw, I don't think it's copyrighted. Like, I don't think Tolkien was the first to use it. They just... Like, they just don't. Well, so, early D&D tried really hard to distance itself from Lord of the Rings. It's like, nuh-uh, we ain't like that. We, uh, we, we're not, like, we're not, we're not with the pot-smoking, like, you know, Gandalf hippies. We're over here doing real math. 
Um, or something. I forget exactly. Real math but chick. Guy Gax had his, like, had his issues. Several of them. But anyway, yeah. Nobody uses Hobbit, which actually is great, because I think, like, I couldn't take it seriously if they were always just talking about Hobbits. Here's a perfectly fine way to rewatch. Okay. That's basically what I drew. Mm-hmm. I like that no matter what in D&D, like, every edition, mm-hmm. uh, like, lives on the dichotomy of fighter good early, wizard good late. Yeah. What? It's never not true. As, as there's a name for this. It is Linear Fighters Quadratic Wizards. Yeah. Um, it's like, because, like, by the time you, like, you get all the cool, like, honestly, the, the stuff that you want to do with magic on a basic, like, yeah, okay, this could be sustainable for a long-term campaign sort of stuff, right? Like, all those spells are, like, level three. But your character still grows levels. So you gotta keep making them bigger. You gotta keep making them more magic. There's always more ideas. Whereas with Fighter, like, it's not like, like I just really want to get to that point where I hold the sword in the air and everybody in the world starts singing my anthem and suddenly I'm in a WWE show and I am the main... Like, the, the goals for Fighter are just I want to hit it with a bigger sword or I want to hit my sword on it harder. Um, sure. I want to hit my sword with more swords. That's called... I think that's a blacksmith. That's a good prophet. Yep, okay. Or a knight um, crusading. I don't know. I just really want to swing my sword well, says Nate Zoyberg. That's a good goal. Because then it's not about the... Like, it's not about the goal. It's about the progress you make as you. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many damage dice you get to roll if you never get to roll them. That's right. Philosophy, man. I know. You miss... 100% of the nat 20s you don't roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a motivational slogan. You do, however, also avoid 100% of the nat 1s you don't roll. So, you know what is, in my opinion, the one thing that turns me off from Pathfinder, like when I, when I first got Is it the it? 18 billion rules? No. Okay. <laughs> the thing that turned me off of Pathfinder from my 4th edition ways way back when uh, was the DM was really into confirmed criticals. It's a. Uh, it's just how you do it in Pathfinder. I, I, I it's just, also how you did it in three point five. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't matter because like I played fourth edition and like when you critical in fourth edition, it's like oh boy, bust out that two W dice, you know, and like get get at it, you know, pitter patter. I think it's uh, it's actually kind of neat because it allows like, like with everything Pathfinder does, it allows a little bit more granularity. Like if you threaten a crit, do not pass the the crit with confirmation. You still hit them every single time. It still auto hits. It just doesn't crit. This is also, uh, it's kind of neat for things like uh, it, it balances out crit fishing builds. Like I can I make want it, a crit fish. What? But I want a crit fish. I can get something. I have something that crits times three at level fifth uh, at on a fifteen and higher, which is uh, you want confirmed criticals on those. I just because like so. one quarter of the time you just get free crits. No, you got to confirm that. Yeah. You, and it means they can be more free with their critical feats. Like, you can just, like, the crit fishing builds are, are wild. They're fun. I like them a lot. Um, I don't know if you can crit fish in 5e. But. Well, there's that All Might Paladin. Right. Who, like, does so much crazy stuff with crit fishing. Um, in 4th edition, there was some crit builds. Yeah. Um, like, you could get, like, lowered crit chance and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, like, you did stupid stuff on crit. You could build that way. Um, and that was a fun way to build, like live bad style. Yeah. You know, bad girls do it well. The Call of Cthulhu style for you. Yeah. Um, We're not gonna make it past the second room, but that's okay because I have three character sheets waiting. <laughs> that's how all Call of Cthulhu is. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there's literally like a different track of points to keep track of in every way that something, something could possibly kill you. Right. It's like trust me, if you aren't getting hit in the head with like haunted bookshelves you will be afraid because you didn't get hit in the head by a haunted bookshelf, and that's just as bad. Alex, you've avoided the physical damage, but you do, in fact, take self-esteem damage. Yeah. You're not good enough. Yep, you see you exactly. as a threat. I think I get the hands Sanity now. damage, fear damage, psychic damage. Slime damage. Kabu tops. Like, um, like, have you seen uh, It's War Games, right? With Matthew Broderick? Yeah, uh, the only winning move is not to play. Yeah, the only way to win is not to play. Yeah, that's Call of Cthulhu, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's fun to talk about Call of Cthulhu in theory and be like, right. "Wouldn't I feel this like, be fun?" I think it's one of those interesting things that's probably a, a great social experience once or twice. I don't know um, uh, how people do long-running Call of Cthulhu campaigns. Do they? Is it like I don't know. does it establish itself for that one? I like built like the ultimate noir, 
like character ones as a sort of fun. I we got a like, noir character uh, request in this uh, group of things. I just made like femme fatale noir, noir character like reporter, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that set like we lasted three sessions, which is the longest Call of Cthulhu game I think I've ever played ever. Right. And like, I'm like you know I'm glad that like the group sort of fell apart because like honestly in two more sessions I was gonna be crazy anyways. So. This just makes it easy. Like you just can't recover your sanity. It's just like, I found obviously bad Cthulhu books. <laughs> my character is too curious to not read them. It's what so my I'm character just, like, would do. Every long rest, I'm just studying these books and losing sanity. I'm just like, I'm just not. This is fine. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> Call of Cthulhu is basically a game of how would you like to die. It's one of my favorite games. Uh, I played Call of Cthulhu and it was fun. I'd never play it again. I don't like systems designed to make you fail. <laughs> I want to play. So like, there's a lot of like, have you like, there's a lot of systems that are made for one shot adventures. Interesting. And my favorite one that I've seen is Kids on Bikes. And I think I've talked about it. You have before. And I really want to play it. Uh, it has like, uh, all your stats just get a dice size. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, your best stat will probably have the d20. Like, I kind of like a d8. Yeah, and like, your worst stat is going to be like, uh, what your d4 is, right? Sure. Uh, but dice explode. Mm -hmm. So anytime you roll a top value on a die, you get to roll again and keep adding. Uh, so like, technically, even though like, like the d4 is your worst skill, you have the highest chance to explode. How... How does the math end up working? There's, like, there's definitely a math model that tells us, like, exactly which one of these is... Right. Like, what's the average roll on all these, right? Like, I'm pretty sure your D4 stat is probably going to be better than your, like, D8 stat, right? Because 25% of the time you get to roll again. And any two rolls on a D4... Because average roll on a D4 is 2.5. Average roll on a D8 is going to be 4.5, right? So any two rolls on a D8 is worth more than a single roll, or any two rolls on a D4 is worth more than a single D8. But then, like, but 75% of the chance, 75% of the time, you just roll a, a 1 through a 3. Right. But that happens half the time on a D8, too. Right. D8s suck. That's what I hear the system is about. It's about trashing the D8s. Which we really need all the help they can get, because... Nobody... D8s get a lot of work for the edition. Do they? Yeah. A lot of things deal D8s of damage. Um, the D12 really is just for barbarians. Let them have it. Are you going to take it? No. You can have it. Like, literally, like, when you sit down at a D&D &D table, like, whoever the barbarian is, just everybody pass that person your D12s. Uh, what we is requesting? Grayer hair. Grayer, grayer hair. hair. Okay. So, we got that blondish gray color, but let's turn it to regular gray. I'm also adding more ruddiness into the cheeks. Oh, man. I love this art. I think it's turning out great. Um, yeah. A D20 gang better than D8. There's nothing more satisfying than a D20. There's nothing more satisfying than a D20? Except for a craps table. Uh, Yahtzee? Yahtzee is not satisfying. Okay, Yahtzee is like baby craps. No, craps is way, way more satisfying. I mean, sure, but when I'm seven and my mom has, like, a, an electric Yahtzee game... Uh, she didn't like go, go send me out on the streets to play craps because we weren't that classy of a neighborhood. <laughs> so we weren't that fat. We were too poor for the, the garden craps sidewalk games. craps games. Oh I wasn't. I didn't. I, I couldn't do the the the, the three Riverstone buy-in on the. Does anyone remember HeroScape? Boy, do I remember HeroScape. I got uh, the big special Walmart edition for my birthday one year, or maybe yeah. it was Christmas, because that it was it came with more set, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that the extra set it came with wasn't worth anything or anything. Like you probably get it super. Like I didn't Actually, know like, that you could like. Escape stuff is all like decently priced on eBay right now. Yeah. It's um, a lot of print. We we I played it with Devlin like once or twice, and then uh, I just left it all in a big bin in his house, and then I believe he sold them for Christmas ornament money. Nice. I made that last part up. I don't know what he did with them. Poor I was going to say, I didn't know he was so invested in Christmas ornaments. We did talk a lot about curving Elven arrows, because Elven, uh, mm -hmm. the elf archer character, didn't need line of sight. Yes. So, uh, like, Elven arrows, just like, they're just going to do how they do. So I had a friend in uh, college, a uh, great guy, 
still see him today because he lives in Austin, mm -hmm. but I don't see him today because uh, social distancing. Right. Great purple. Great purple. Yeah. Excellent purple. Um, he loved HeroScape. Mm -hmm. I had some HeroScape stuff, and so I just gave it all to him because he had the greater HeroScape collection. Right. And uh, the HeroScape good HeroScape year. We HeroScape sometimes, and it was so much fun. And uh, the big meme that we always drew out of it as a HeroScape uh, group was, uh, like, it doesn't matter how cool you are, he'll never beat the 13th Massachusetts line! Because the, <laughs> there's, like, the Minutemen, yeah. like, colonial riflemen, or musketmen, right? Right. And they are bonkers broken, because there's four of them, and uh, if they don't act on your turn... Uh -huh. Like, if they, if you can move them, and no, if you don't shoot with them, but just move them, then they will shoot as soon as something moves within their line of sight. Oh. So if you approach them, you just get, like, firing squad. You just get got. And, like, they're so cheap for your point value, for your army. It's because they, they take uh, ten minutes to reload, so, you know. Yeah, I know, right? Except not in this game. And so, like, you just can't get them. Like, if you mm -hmm. take any hill, it's over. Because the Massachusetts line is going to shoot you down. What a patriotic creator of that game <laughs> to make the Massachusetts men so OP. Yeah, there's it's a, wonderful. A, a, uh, a man I know who, uh, I don't know, who I uh, occasionally view media from who uh, uh, creates fountain penning. That is his, uh, his profession. Noodler? His name is Noodler. I don't know if that's his actual I mean, name. No I, I can only believe that his birth certificate says Noodler, Noodler on it. Mr. Noodler. Noodler. Uh, and so, uh, but he's like this very, very hyper opinionated guy, real like grumpy old kind of like a, a grand uncle type sort of thing going on. Um, except that the things he has like deep seated opinions on are so like just like out there that you're not even sure. Like, it's like I don't think this is racist. Well, I think this is just weird. Pants. Blue pants, teal blue or like navy blue. It says terrible blue pants. Terrible blue is that like he bright? Must be referring to the pants that Kyle was wearing in the skit because mine. Were my wedding pants. Which, which ones are blue? Do y'all know EU4 follows you on Twitter? Why would they do that? <laughs> Who is EU4? EU, Europa Universalis 4? We made a video about it. I, so people requested we make a video about it for like years on years on years. And we're like, fine, you know what? We're going to make a video on it. And so we did uh, EU4 versus Civ 6. Um, I liked my concept a lot. Kyle liked parts of my concept. We all compromised a bunch and uh, we got the scripts in out. Um, uh, Kyle uh, was not all that happy with the video response. Like, so we got two different kinds of people responding to the video. Everybody who knew EU4 was like, what is this video? I don't get this at all. I don't think you've ever played this game. Which, to our credit, is, it, it is not true. We played it for 20 minutes before writing the sketch. And uh, everybody who, on the Civ 6 side, thought it was great. <laughs> anyway. Typical. And all I, the Europa people hated us? I, I, the, like in, fact, in fact, the, the entire Universalis of Europa hated us. Um... We, we did a, a, a one-off a little video thing called uh, uh, At Least We're Funny, which is going to be a, a long-running series where uh, Kyle and I just jump into a video game with no tutorials and see what happens. Uh, turns out, EU4, not only should you look at the tutorials, but in fact, the game tutorial, like, every comment on it is like, why didn't you watch this person's 10-hour uh, introductory lecture on how to <laughs> do EU4? Like, there's, like, Typical. the beginner advice is just watch this guy's YouTube channel. He's got, like, a million videos like, on just how to, like, do anything in EU4. It was a fun time that I wouldn't do again. Why? Ricky, you can come sit on the couch, man. No, we got some to... extra space. No, I'm gonna sit right here. Okay. Uh, how do we feel about the color scheme? Yeah, those pants are 10 out of 10, he says. Yeah. This looks dope. I am so I glad. I like that his... I don't want to say foot hair. I'm gonna say foot hair. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like how his foot hair is gray. It could have been... You could have said fur. That would have been worse. I... I <laughs> originally what I was going oh. to say, and I decided against it. Ooh. Let's give him a little... Let's give him a little blending in the cheeks. Oh, such a cutie. Ooh. Very cute. Too big of brush. I'm going to do a little nose definition here, because Hobbit... Or Halfling What's should have... What's this character's name? Oh, wait. It's, uh... Oh. When the fog rolls in. Uh, oh. When the fog rolls in? Yeah. Oh, that's when the shadows attack. Yeah, and you can call them now at D&D &D and uh, Fogs, and I'm not sure this joke is working, but it's okay. I was there for the EU4 sketch. It was quite funny, but it was a bit confusing. That's fair. Kyle, Kyle's takeaway from that sketch, because this was especially during a period of time when every single sketch was a lesson. That's what we were like really right. going for. The, the takeaway there is 
writing a sketch because people would really like you to do one, but that you have no passion for and can't uh, get into the game enough to uh, write like uh, deeply wasn't worth it. Douglas Dennis is this man's name. Cool. I'm trying something experimental. Don't worry if it's bad. I'll change it back. Eyebrows are hair. Hmm. Tau are the coolest in 40k because they have mech suits. And when I briefly stunted into 40k while working at a Wonko's Toys and Games, uh, I was drawn to just field crisis suits and broadsides. Isn't every single unit in 40k a mech suit? No, 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 no. But these are like Gundams. Big mech suits. Like not like not like Gears of War, like where everybody's just so beefy that mm. they need like technology to contain their their like massive packs. Right. And hair is fur. Eyebrows are hair and hair is fur. Thank you for ruining my night, figurative uh, IQ. One Q. I don't know what EU4 is. Nor do I. I'm not at this point, I'm too afraid. EU4 you can is like, say that it's just like Universe of Europe is 4, but I'm like, I, like, it's sort of like how Comedy Central always plays Barbershop 2 back in business, but uh -huh. it's just like, yeah, but I haven't seen Barbershop 1. Right. If I, if I haven't seen the other three <laughs> Europe universes, am I going to be okay? Yeah. The answer is no. It's like super civ, but, but like, like everything is more spreadsheety. Like every single menu, like. You you can't declare war without a cause a, a, a cause of Ellie. so you have to like uh, go and find a reason to start a war. There's like six menus deep. We screwed up just picking our country on the very first screen because it has like six countries just like right here, yeah. and you're like, okay, I guess I'll just I, I guess I have to click one of these, and it's like, well, no, you can pick any country. You just click on the map, dumbass. These are just flags to like help you like if you want ideas. The other thing about EU four is it's uh, you start in like a very specific year. Which the chap I'm sure knows. I think it's it may be eleven oh four, maybe fourteen thirty it's it's like a specific year and then it just like the years go on like up through like two thousand or something. Um, and then you know, you just see which empire wins out this time. Uh, but with so many menus, so many different ways to run a government. I think it's actually easier to run a real government than it is to play. But how many before. turns until I can build the the Colossus of Rhodes? At least six oh, sorry. Kyle got it first. No! They've been working on it for at least the last 20 turns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kyle actually started six turns ago and just kind of like, oh, I guess I should get on it. So I, I loved, the only like like historical RTS game I played, mm -hmm. and Civ is really not an RTS game in my opinion. No. Uh, it was Age of Empires 2, which uh, me and my roommates in college enjoyed so much we had weekly LAN matches of EU2. Aww. Um, I only won one of the roommate series land challenges yeah uh, i mean byzantine they're complicated huh they're complicated they are complicated they should be the word byzantine means complicated anyway go ahead uh, they get stronger walls okay and they have like better trash units than most other people they also have this like really sweet like horse bound unit that does aoe damage but that doesn't matter because i'm so bad at the micro game that i cannot do combat very well so uh, I just run a good economy, there you go. and I wonder rush. Yeah. And so here's the here's the trick though, I don't upgrade to muskets and leave myself on bows. And then we build just layers and layers of wall around the wonder. Uh -huh. And when everybody strolls in with their sped to uh, like musket men, uh -huh. they can't shoot over the wall, and my archers can't. And that's how I wow. won. I built a wonder and like three walls deeped it with improv improved walls. I think he's mostly done. That looks pretty Does dope. He, he looks like he is color? ready to go on an adventure. Ooh. You just loving the yellow eyes today, aren't you? Oh, I had yellow selected already. Oh, that makes him look way that too evil. Dope. That looks dope. What color eyes does he have? I'm thinking green. It actually came out blue, but that's okay. The Weeaboo Blueberry Communists. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, work. Uh, Daily Dark Lord. Foot hair. Ricky 2020. I think that was the best option. 
You could have said that the hair on his feet. Oof, that was actually a way better option. <laughs> okay, he's done. Let's write a little Douglas Dennis thing. Alright. Well, we says heckin' dope. Sport Yay. tribe slash suit stage. Best strat game. Say that all again. Spore Tribe slash Civ Stage Best Strat Game. I, the, you, you sound like the hockey players for Letterkenny. I, like, I, I know I do. Herda? Herda. Um, like, I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm there with Spore. I have Spore. And then Spore has a, is that a spinoff? Is that what's going on? Sports if you want Sports Base Stage, stage then, then Stellaris. Stellaris. I see. That is a letter Kenny bit. I remember that. What? Let's see, it's even got the four S's. It's, it's alliterative, just like Letter Kenny would be. Stellaris is another one that I've actually never ever done with. Uh, it's Apparently, by, it's really good. But it's by the same people who do EU4. Um, it's very politicky, very. It's also, it's just like, I think it's very repeatable. Like, you know, what will these space identifiers do this time? So, the thing is. Do you guys have time to talk about our Lord and Savior Twilight Imperium? Oh my god. No, nobody has time to <laughs> nobody has time to it's read their fun. Room. I'm sure it it's is. It's so much fun. And but you in have my like opinion, a, it's way better than any of the You get like versions. a banking degree for getting through the tutorial. Uh, I like, have almost. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, sort of a banking degree. The uh the best of these games is I think Crusader Kings 2, because it's just a little bit more uh wacky and just kinda like whoop. Um and it's like a Civ is the most accessible for sure. It's like the children's like uh like building blocks, like wooden building blocks of uh, Civ Sims. Um, I really like Command and Conquer Generals. Okay. Which is an older one. And I really like Stronghold Crusader, which is a, a dope RTS because uh, no, there's no builder unit. Okay. And there's no build time. You just build the things. things so it's just like a, a cash out? Yeah, you just like, and here, here's my work, Merton's hut. You know, and we, yeah, oh, that looks good. I like the little shady green stuff in the back. Thanks. I think he's done. Woo! Woo! He's done. Yay. Okay. Are we going to pick the new one? Yes. Twilight Imperium, let's go. I like Twilight Imperium with no expansions. I think that the, the like, original eight, the Imperial phase, is needed to progress the game. And I will always play Trash Pirates for life. Trash Pirates are my favorite race. Okay, who? what's your new pick? My next pick is... Um, let's see here. A forever drunken dwarf paladin that every time he's... Every time... Hold on. Maybe not that one. <laughs> Alright. Picking another one. Oh, oh, that one's still blurry. All right, sorry. It's okay. Mid-length, dark-haired female Vistani lore bard, big believer of destiny, currently secretly serving the vampire lord Strahd, pink and yellow skirts and a cropped shirt, yet somehow very goth. So I don't know. I haven't played Curse of Strahd. Curse of Strahd is a uh, victory. It's, it's Dracula. It's Dracula. It's what's, Vis before. what's Vistani mean? Uh, Vistani is like straight up like uh, when you think of like hurdy gurdy like style uh, like. Gypsy esque. Yeah, people. it's Romani okay. traveling people stuff. Sure. Like traveling circus. Type. It is literally just, yeah. Yeah, like people. They, they've got like the, the pipe organs on the carts and stuff like that. Mm, okay. So let's hear that description again. Uh, mid length, dark haired, female, Vistani lore bard. Big believer in destiny. Big believer of destiny currently secretly serving the vampire lord Strahd, pink and yellow skirts. Cropped shirt, yet somehow very goth. I think if you that. could work, like tarot card, somewhere in there. Yeah, there's like a, there's like the crystal grandma kind of look thing that you could go for. Like like literal tarot cards. Uh, you will. I mean, like the big thing in Curse cards. of Strahd. In Pathfinder, we call them a hero. In in uh, Curse of Strahd, there's this big thing about you eventually find a Vistani fortune teller, mm -hmm. and uh, she will do a taroka reading for you. Mm hmm. And the Taroka reading determines where certain key items in the in the quest are. Neat. And it determines what the weaknesses of Strahd are. 
neat. It is really neat. And definitely, like, one of the reasons, like, it's such a replayable, like, module. Mm hmm. Mm, cool. That's good to know. So, like, the Vistani definitely have, like, this. I mean, it's called Taroka, but. It's Tarot. It's essentially Tarot cards. But she, it says she's a bard? She, yeah, she's a lore bard, so she doesn't actually play. Lore bard, she's like, yeah, she's a storytelling, story collector. She's a storyteller. Are you in this chat jumping the pun? That's funny. <laughs> that is good. Crusader Kings, even if you aren't great, you can have a good time. Fabtastic. I like to think that I can have a good time not being great at things. Um, <laughs> otherwise. This is a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. By sketch one. I'll just invisible it. Okay. We're working. This is from uh, at jumping the pun. Right. Jumping the pun. Are you here? They're lying low. We summon you jumping the pun. Someone go get S jumping the pun. Figurative IQ said ye. Oh, so that's jumping the pun? Where's that? All right, figurative IQ. I hope so. I hope that means. Thanks for the name appreciation. I worked too hard on it. It's really good. I think this is a much better stance than my first uh, draft of that stance. Yeah. Yeah. We got to draft a stance because she's she's like edgy, right? She's. A, I, I'm picturing boots, but I don't have enough room to draw the boots, so we make her tinier. <laughs> Yet, yet again. That's, that's this how, is actually my entire good. life in Procreate. I, you know, I used to never draw feet. I don't know if any of you are artists and can, and can relate to this, but I would start the head way too low on the page, and then I've never drawn any fucking feet. So when I actually have to draw them, it's a struggle. Like, now that I can actually resize the drawing. <laughs> I wish the world worked this way, though. Like, look at these boots. Uh, boots don't fit. Whoop. Siv is like baby's first cool. strategy in. Yep, that's what everybody kind of says. Boo. My take on the sketch, for the, for the record, was uh, uh, getting a bunch of the same leaders who show up in both Civ and EU4, and they have a, uh, like, there's a big conspiracy going on or something, so they have a big, uh, a super uh, world council, and the entire time, all the Civ people are just sitting there, like, uh, like uh, goofing off and having fun and making, like, everything, everything they do makes a little chiming noise, bing, bing, and then uh, everybody in the EU4 side of the table uh, gets annoyed at them and then just murders them all. <laughs> Um, I think it's very funny. You know, I like strategy games and everything, and everybody has strategy game elitism. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm gonna drop a little bit of that. Uh, my favorite strategy game is Turing compatible, and was used by the CIA as a training device, so... Wow. Is, yeah. Leg! How does leg do? There are, there are, there have been, like, found, like, and declassified, like, files that are filled with, like, mock-up magic cards made by the CIA yeah. that are, like, used as, like, an information-gathering game. Nope. That's not how leg do. CIA doesn't know what anything costs. This is a 1-1 one -one flyer. It says 14 million white mana. Government pays it. Yeah. Right. Just expense that. Yeah. Expense the mana bill. Fox Folly says, I like war game. Is there something, I mean, I know there is something called War Game. I can relate to bad placement of heads. Nice. Yeah. Yay! Who said that? Do Rex time. Good Go job, Rex. Do Rex time. Um, I was considering Mountain Blade, but not worth, in my opinion, too expensive. All I know is that everybody is freaking the hell out because Banner Lord finally happened. It's like one of those things. It's like it's like a Duke Nukem Forever style thing. Except I mean, they've been just working on it for the like past six years. Yeah. What? I, I don't understand video games. I guess. Yeah. I think it's what it is, right? Because, like, cause like, John gets really excited about all these video games, right? And then I'm like, oh, what's that about? And it's like, he just describes something to me, and I'm like, that can't possibly be in a video game, right? Like, that's not how video games work. Most, at like, a certain and point... a bunch of people have described the, like, Mount Blade games to yeah. me, and, and, like, I'm just like, there's, like, no way there's a video game like that, right? Like, that I... sounds way too detailed. 
I have never... I like this pose. Me too. I, I think it's turning out really cool. So what what instrument does your character play? She's a storyteller. Oh, so she doesn't need an she instrument. She writes magic through the lore of her stories, and also she's going to have a skirt eventually. Yes. Um, Thank you. So, like, I what gets me is, like, all these games that are essentially just different flavors of a bunch of menus to uh, reenact historical battles through fictional or sometimes real leaders and watch them die over the span of a bunch of years, like... You know, Civ and EU4 and Crusader Kings and Victoria. And all. Right. Um, but, like, I think at a certain level, like, um, uh, the kinds of people who, who make these games are really just looking, like, they use the the video game console as just, like, efficient inventory management. Like, there's nothing that's, like, that a lot of these games, there's nothing keeping you from just printing it out and just, like, doing it through a binder manually, except that that would just be a bajillion sheets of paper, right? So, video games. War Game was a movie about an AI taking control of nukes. Oh, yes, that's the Matthew Roderick movie we were talking about yeah. earlier. The only winning movie that is not to play. That's how the computer talked. Uh, it was... Devlin uh, excuses himself from conversation like Jimmy Neutron. I, that makes me more, more... That is a more generous interpretation than I was going to go for. Which... Anyway. Thanks for watching, Devlin. Bye, Devlin. We won't see you next time because we can't see y'all, but you can see us next time, and uh, you should do that. Any accessory details you want to throw at me before I start accessorizing this lady? Devlin also says, see you guys, the art's great as ever, Rachel. So. What'd you say? Devlin says, see you guys, the art's great as ever, Rachel. Oh, thank you, Devlin. She's got a crop top, so look at this crop top. I cropped it, and I drew her in a nice, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Pose that exposes her abdomen so that you can see the crop of the crop top. I, oh my god. I said That's, that in like that the, exactly. the weirdest way possible. Yeah, that is 100% what the pose is called. It's a German pose, so it's just like, it's one word in German, but. Let's give her a bigger butt. But, butt time. Lots of accessories. Yep. That's what they said? Yep. They said lots of accessories. But not like specific accessories. I can. I mean, I, so I'm like, happy to accessorize. Specifically, lots. Vistani is very like gypsy oriented. Right. Just everything should uh, dangle and bangle. I'm fine with that. You can do that. Um, how about striped socks? Oh, you said, was there? There were stripes anyway. Was it a striped crop top? Multiple necklaces, rings, just weird things. I think they said they uh, the the skirt was too colored. Oh, so off. I must have I must have imagined the uh, the stripes when she said really goth. I think it's fair. I think I think striped socks are more like a scene thing, but you know. You know, I think that it works. I think it's kind of piratey, which is kind of gypsy. -y. They both wear red fabric sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, video games are just like I think two D, like like the Star Citizen and No Man's Sky. Like no. I'm just like. I think No Man's Sky could be very very. Relaxing, probably. Uh, yeah. Same thing with like Elite Dangerous. Like you just kind of like, just like jet out and be like, I'm just gonna go. And when I want to stop, I stop. I haven't played any of these. I, I like open world. I like, um, but see, I like open world because it's carefully How do I beat designed. Other people. Uh, you find out more stuff than they did, or you do it first or best, or you beat your previous self who didn't know the things you know now. I want a repeatable like. Uh, adrenaline from winning. Oh. I want, I want repeatable win. Or repeatable crushing loss to get me to stop playing video games. That is the thing is like, uh, with like, like playing mm -hmm. like Magic Arena or League or any fighting game, it's like, uh, you either win and like the winning keeps you going, mm -hmm. or you lose and you're like, I guess that's enough video games for today. Have you ever played a Soulsborne? I've played a Dark Souls. Did this do it for you? Was this, was this no. an achievement? No. It has to be I a real person? I didn't like it. You can't you can't beat No no no, but I can beat game. Like I can beat game Sorry, and that's enough. It didn't feel like it wasn't as satisfying? No, like but Persona 4, Persona 5 are like a ton of fun. Yeah. And Pokemon's a ton of fun. Because Pokemon is great one player, and then it's also great competitively. Uh -huh. Pokemon um, is the uh, the golden Cross child of uh, of um, uh, JRPG 
inventory crafting and um, uh, uh, sports roster management. Yeah. Fox Folly says, I mean, League of Legends makes me hate me, but I can't stop. Hey, same. Add me sometime. Um, Not much, anything specific. A theme of eyes, maybe. A theme of eyes? Like, in here? Yeah. Okay. She's know. getting fishnet gloves. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, the last game I got excited for and bought, like, on release day. Mm -hmm. It was Pokemon Sword. Um... And like before that, you said I lots of rings, Smash right? Smash Ultimate, lots of rings. Yeah, lots of rings. What other accessories did she say? Multiple necklaces, rings, just weird things. And give her some nails. Ooh, look at them nails. Love nails. Girl, look at that body. Oh, it look. I mean, the body looks good. Check it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know the body of the nails. I don't know. That's what it's really saying, but. You no, I mean the name. body the looks body good. The body of the nails? It, literally, I said that while you were zoomed in on, like, just nails. Well, I was about to go to boob that's shading, fair. so, you know. No, that's fine. Eyes of March. Minecraft is so relaxing, I can mine for hours. I Minecraft is either very relaxing or very stressful for me. Like, it depends on how much I'm, like, annoyed that I need, like, a uh, concepting idea is cool, then, like, I realize, oh, man, I need all these materials, it's gonna take, like, six years to get all the materials and it's like that's kind of like a downer but then i'm like but it doesn't matter because i'm enjoying my time mining and like it just kind of like it goes in waves of, of how much i expect me to be doing the cool thing that i'm playing this game for guild wars 2 was a lot of fun a lot of fun too much fun yeah i would literally like stay up all nights and nights and play it it was really bad for me yeah so i'm glad i stopped but it was a ton of fun there was a, uh, uh, my, uh, my roommate and, uh, uh, one of my, my girls right now, Kirk, uh -huh. um, who I, I think I've told you you haven't met, like, six times after you've met him, like, seven times. Um, anyway, he was, uh, in the engineering dorms freshman year of Baylor when, uh, WoW came out. Wow. And it swept through, like, a literal plague. Like, they, they like, one guy started playing it, and he's like, and then the next guy in the engineering dorm was like, well, I gotta get that. And then, like, uh, there was like a 40%... But WoW came out when we were in middle school. Kirk's old. Is he? He's Kirk's not that old. I don't, I don't... It must not have been when though, actual right? uh, Warcraft in, came uh, out. He was his senior year of when I was in my sophomore year, but I... The timelines don't match up perfect. Um, but, yeah, it was like... He survived the WoW plague. About 40% of his dorm did not. And they just... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Theme of eyes. Theme I'm of so sorry. Eyes. I think this looks funny, um, but I'm gonna take it away, because I'm sure that's not what you like, envision. Uh, like not like the uh, yeah, the Guild Wars Two is the only game that like stole my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, Magic sort of stole my life. Well, Magic you know. gave you a different life. It's uh, it returned. It life gave me life. life. Magic, Magic is like there's a pact thing going on here, right? You're, there's some exchanges. There is some exchange. You, you like, like you give like you get both the magic and the gathering. And the, I would yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite meme currently is the, like, uh, when you want to play Magic but the gathering isn't allowed. Right. <laughs> and I've, I've been feeling that a lot. We have to play more Commander at your table. Yeah. We should. But, uh... Oh, wow. WoW came out on November 23rd, 2004. I was thinking... Yeah, like, I was like, I was definitely in middle school when WoW came out. Okay, well, so my, my first year of high school was 04, 05. Because then it's 05, 06, 06, 07, 07, 08. No. However, when yeah. Halo 2 came out... Yeah. I was in 6th grade for that. 7th grade for that. Uh, no, because I was in 7th grade for that. I was in 8th grade for that. Because I was playing football. Uh-huh. And, like, I remember, like, it was a big thing. This was Halo 2. Yeah. And I remember, like, the weekend it came out, I'm pretty sure I went to my youth group at my church. Like you. And we definitely met to play Medal of Honor. A good game about World War II. It's very historic, right? It's the it's good very, guys won, right? It's very allowed in the house of God. The Lord's work was done on and this And we battle. hooked up the two Xboxes we had and we played Halo 2. <gasps> the youth pastor brought two copies of Halo 2 in the steel books. And we played Halo 2. Wow. Eight player. Wow. And it was glorious. Of course it was. 
you could doodle in that one. Like yeah. two needlers? And you could hijack What am I going to do with ghosts? two needlers? Oh my gosh. I can still play... I can play Eight Man Lockout yeah. for eternity. Like, if I hit... <laughs> like, give me that old giant Xbox controller and I'm in. I, uh, I had a real difficult time with... I, I went through a Halo phase, but like, actually with a lot of my competitive gaming... None of it was online. None of it was like land. It was all just like, Ooh, a, like split that. screen with like the Thanks. same the eyeball necklace. Thanks. By like two or three people uh, uh-huh. in somebody's cramped bedroom, just on their tiny TV. Uh, and so like, Halo Slayer was fine, and I eventually got a lot better at it. But it was so like when it was just like the three of us killing each other over and over again. It was it. I was like missing something when Firefight came out. Firefight, I could play forever. Firefight is the... Uh, you versus Waves. You versus Waves. Like, um, old co-op uh, that, Slayer. In my opinion, that was only fun in Reach. Reach is also the one I played the most of. Yeah, I played so much Reach. I was in Reach. college when Reach came out. Yeah, my roommate got it, and he's like, so I need somebody to help me with this, because I can't do this on my own. And that's uh, how I became uh, acquaintances with my roommate. Oh, that's like such a cute face. Yeah. I like the eyeballs on the earrings and the... I like... You did make a theme of eyes. I did. I've been adding eyes for like the past ten minutes to different places. Nice. Um, and now I drew regular eyes on her face. But I think her eyes are too, like... I think this is like too cute, kind of. She needs to be like more goth chick, I guess. Yeah. Not that they can't be cute, but... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Called out. I am liking this character. This character looks a lot, like, better now that you've drawn them. Not that they didn't look better when you did not have drawn them, but... Yeah, no, I'm pleased. That, um, that hurt. I took psychic damage from that. Okay, good. <laughs> Everyone here the, doing Xbox. The boots need uh, revamping now that I've mm. done the rest. And then God said, let us play Halo 2. <laughs> um, I did not own an Xbox when Halo 2 came out. Yeah. I owned an, a GameCube. I never owned... Like, but... I didn't own a, a, a non-Nintendo system until, like, I got, I, I inherited a 360, like, three years after its life cycle was done, just played through everything there, and then I, uh, I ended up, like, I bought a PS4, and I still, I'm not sure that I forgive myself for it, I think when great. GameStop had refurbished Xboxes for $89, mm-hmm. I remember one Christmas, I got a refurbished Xbox original, and I got, like, Halo 2, Halo 1, The Incredibles video game, which was rated T14, and actually pretty good. Um, uh, press I to SSX that. Tricky. Okay, good. And, uh, what else did I get? DDR. DDR Ultra Mix 2 with a dance pad. Hell yeah. And, uh, that was, like, honestly one of the best Christmases. I, it's gotta be. Too many eyes. <laughs> too many Is this eyes? too many eyes? <laughs> I like it. This looks like, like... Like a, a, a Bill Cipher, uh, war, like warlock now, which I love. Bill Cipher. Yeah. Is that like Bill Cipher than science? It's, it's oh, Cypher. you'll get. We'll get to him. He's in Gravity Falls. He's the main okay. villain. Ooh, got some anime hair. He is literally an Illuminati symbol. Oh, that guy. Okay. Oh, so that I, guy. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the memes. I've seen the memes on my board. At school. Everyone was shooting down the enemy in Halo. I was busy, busy in Little Big Planet, just making weird contraptions and learning the power of friendship. Yeah, it's because you were one of ten people who bought the PS3. Yeah, but I have three PS3s. Let's give her some more badass eyebrows. I don't actually have three PS3s. Like her eyebrows, eyes. <laughs> don't. <laughs> That's a I perverse like, thought, Ricky. Like, wait, what? No, it's not. Not a perverted thought, just a perverse. There's thought. There's a perverse thought and a perverted thought. Mine was neither. It's pretty. That's perverse. It is against the natural order. To be fair, but shortened to TBF, <laughs> just to stop me from like to be sure. fairing. Uh, the robe of many eyes is a thing. Oh, it is. What does that mean? Don't give me to it. Ten people. I will have you know all my friends at a PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation ain't got no games. That was the that was the meme. That was like for like a solid three years. It's like, oh, you got a PlayStation Three. That's super cool. But you don't got no games. Cause PlayStation don't got no games. I so I like, don't know if it was a funny um, thing, but it was definitely what we said. I always wanted a PlayStation Three because PlayStation Three got no games, mm-hmm. except 
for fighting games. And Uncharted. That was its big draw. Like, PlayStation 3 had, like, uh, P4A Ultimates. Mm -hmm. It had, uh, like, some Guilty Gear going on. It had a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 when that first came out. It was on... This is, this is a quality exchange here. Uh, I will have you know all my friends had a PlayStation. It was taboo in school to have Xbox. PlayStation was the state religion. Did you also have a Vita? Yeah. Just... Like, do you know how much you, information you gain about a person when you uh, uh, you hear that they've owned a Vita? I bought a PSP off of Craigslist modded. This was me. I was actually making fun of Kyle, but he wasn't here to be made fun of, so that's too bad. But, like, a Vita? Vita's actually the best. Vita's the... the Vita, the PSP2, right? Like, yeah, like, can I get a Vita for cheap nowadays? Because, like, I kind of think they're still, like, 150 bucks. I know, I think they are, which is annoying. Because, like, they have crossplay, right? They have a... There we go. I only wanted, I only wanted to play P4G mm. and to play uh, Dancing All Night. That's all I want to play on it. $100 sometimes. I never wanted my Vita, to be honest. My dad just got it. Nice. This one is going for $570. A Vita? Yes. Is it some limited edition No, one? it's like an eBay post that doesn't... Um, uh, you can just get one off of Amazon for used, very good condition, $159. Jeez. Um, I think they're still... I mean, they're technically, they're still in generation, right? Like, The store closes this year for, ne for next year for Vita. It does, uh, surely you can just... Hack them by now, right? Like, I mean, at that point, like, well, are there still cartridges? Can I? They have discs. Discs. But at least the PSP had the itty bitty discs. Yes, the PSP had the the UMDs, but like, um, that surely is not for everyone. This looks so great. I her, think it looks. Her, her face got a lot of sass. Yes, I I've reset resassified her sweet face that I do the first time. I do think I like your netting texture too. Thank you. <laughs> so. Vita was a good little system, just got no marketing push from Sony, and then no games got released for it. The problem is, it's it's designed as a lifestyle enhancement uh, accessory for the PlayStation 4 owner, right? Like, yeah. It's like, if you, because it can theoretically play remotely games you can play on your PS4, which means you would never release something just for the Vita, because that means you could be releasing it on PS4. Right. Um, I think it's probably like a, a, a pretty great little, like, a, a media technology solution to somebody who has sold their life to Sony. Like I, like, I mean, I sold my life to, uh, actually, Amazon with our current home automation. But Google Hello, or else. maple syrup. Huh? Somebody joined their name. Hello, was, maple syrup. Their name was maple syrup. You know what the PSP did? PSP gave us Peace Walker. And that is something that I will always treasure. The what? Peace Walker. What's that? Metal oh, Gear Solid. Metal Gear. Hey, Rachel, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. So, when I originally had a PSP, it was modded. Mm -hmm. I remember I had Kyle put uh, a Batman on drugs, LOL, on my PSP. <laughs> that's that's that is such a that is a hell of a what does of that a mean? 2007 sentence. Yeah, it is. Um, it was this really like it was this really bad uh, like looped GIF essentially with noise. Was this um, a, like a white team in D? Is that Huh? You're you're the man now, dog. Oh you're my God! You're the man now, you're dog. That also, you're the man now, dog. Uh, is that movie where that sentence comes from? Is one of my grandfather's favorite movies. The Rock. So he owns it. No, it's not from The Rock. Is it not? Where's it from? It's from. Oh my gosh! Sean Connery is an English teacher. Uh, okay. For inner city youth, I can't remember the name of the movie. Stand the Rock. It's not stand. Yeah, it's basically stand and deliver. Stand Anyways, and deliver. My grandpa likes it. Stand and deliver. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we watch it not often, but like mm -hmm. enough that like I constantly get the "You're the man now, dog." Nice. Um. Uh. But you should all go watch The Rock. It's great. Oh, the Rock is pretty good. The Rock is so decent that you don't realize it's a Michael Bay movie. Oh, it is. See, I actually like Michael Bay movies. I don't think there's anything wrong. I mean, I see like I like Armageddon. But The Rock is actually like, a, it's got a story and Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery, and they quote the Aeneid in it. So. What the heck? At one point, uh, Sean Connery just gets my brother like, to me, now I said, don't forget this. And then Nick Cage uh, uh, translates it. It's great. What color is her crop top? I think yellow. 
Yellow crop top? I think it's yellow pink skirt. Oh. It's all goth somehow. That's it. Mid length, dark haired female, big believer in destiny. Pink and yellow skirts and crop shirt. Yes, somehow very goth. Okay. Um, so what's the most. Let's do the skirts first and then I'll move on to the rest. Now that we know pink and yellow, pink and yellow. See me in my town when you need me. I like this beautiful a lot. That's why I know all the words there. Rookie just knows all the words to everything, too. It's one of his talents. I don't know how we could turn that into a stream, but I'm sure we could. No. Just me song quiz. Just playing song quiz by myself playing on stream. Four, four, <gasps> four person song quiz. You're all four. And getting perfect scores. I'm seeing if Rick, Ricky, Ricky one, Ricky two, Richard. Please. That's my nightmare. <laughs> Richard? Yes. Six Underground, and that was a bad movie? I've never heard of that. Artist experience. Whatever looks best, I trust you. Oh. Yay. Um, okay. We're thinking through this. We're gonna make her look gothic. With the stripes. Supposedly we were told to go uh, check out how cool the moon is. Right now? Yeah, but we're not. Who obviously. told you that? Uh, I watched Local 58, and this is a trap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, totally legit. Like, I promise. If you are afraid, we can look together. His throne. It's a super pink moon. It's a sailor pink. Uh, see, now the story's changing. That tells me that they're like... No, I heard it was the moon that gives you ice cream. It's yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Shout out to Local Fifty Eight. I hope they upload again. It's the brightest the moon will be all year. Okay, we are gonna check it out. It's in the all right, we're gonna go check it out. Yeah, not right now though. But yeah, the stream's gonna be over soonish. So, I guess I'll have time to finish this drawing. The moon might not be there at the end of this drawing. Really? I'm just kidding. The moon's gonna be there. The same Majora's Mask. They're good. The moon is definitely always there in Majora's Mask. If the moon just oh, wait, wasn't no, there, the whole problem would be gone. This is true. I've never really seen Michael Bay movies. Can somebody tell me why he's so infamous? So it basically came down to he wrote, he made the same movie over and over again. It just so he started off as a commercial uh, filmer, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but but he just he's famous for having uh, just a bajillion explosions, no plot, all action movies. Uh, he's actually, so he's got a lot of style as a director. It's just a very broadly appealing uh, uh, boom-go-boom style. Uh, at one point, I think he was, somebody did an interview and said, asked him if he was like aware of his reputation or something. He's like, so I make movies for 15-year-old boys. Is that a crime? Uh, like, That's a really good quote. He just like, he knows what he's into. Uh, he, he's, it's a, uh, he also did all the Transformers movies. That's really a, a whole separate legacy on it right there. Um, but he has a lot of, uh, I've heard the argument that he uses a lot of style, but doesn't know why he's using a lot of style. So a lot of like the dynamic, super cool shots that he's using aren't meaningful in this, in the context of the scene. That doesn't bother me much. Well, I can think socks really sell the goth. Mm -hmm. Yay. That's what I was going for. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to incorporate that goth feel. Mm, we could do pink boots. Like or just yellow. like super pink leather. I think yellow is gonna read rain boot maybe. I don't know, like a pale like leather yellow, and her boots are yellow, just like I Tom think, Bombadil. I think the pink boots are fine. Oh yeah. Maybe one pink, one black. Oh, that's a, that's cool. I think that, that, I'm this is like approaching like Cheshire Cat kind of. I don't know. Ooh, I kind of like one pink, one yellow. It's kind of fun. Let's try making one of them black. Yeah, a lot of his movies are just not really high art. A lot of it comes down to that. Um, but they, up until recently, they always, you know, did well at the box office. It, I think he also was, like, kind of caught, uh, got caught holding the bag on a big blow em up action movies when those went out of style, which was always kind of a sucky place to be. Michael B. Or, uh, sorry, Michael B. Jordan is a great actor. Um, but Michael Bay, he did Armageddon. Did he also do Independence Day? That's Roland Emmerich. Huh. Roland Emmerich hates America and keeps destroying it. Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, uh, maybe The Knowing. I, I, uh, the Knowing. Oh, no. R.I.P. Tom Bombadil. Not dead, just forgotten. He cannot die. It's literally it, like the universe will end before he will. And we still won't know what he is. Maybe he was the universe. That's how it works. Who's Tom Bombadil? 
So, there's this book. It's a pretty cool book. Not many people have read it anymore. It is called The Lord of the Rings. Um, and in The Lord of the Rings, so all the hobbits leave the Shire, right? And they go off to, like, go see Elrond of Rivendell. In the books, there's a whole interlude there where they get captured by uh, uh, British um, uh, barrow zombies, and they are held in the underground barrow tombs. But luckily, they met this bizarre old weird man out in the forest who sang things like, uh, oh, ring a ding, ring a ding, ring a ding, dillo. It's me, my name is Tom Bombadillo. Uh, and his boots are yellow. He just like sings and just chants like crazy, random, bizarro stuff. Sure. And he's got a super hot wife, and all the hobbits are like, "What's going on?" And then he puts on the one ring, and it does nothing to him. And he just goes, "Ha, huh, that's funny!" And then just like sends them on their way. And so they've been captured by these British, uh, like public, like British uh, field zombies. Um, and uh, Tom Bombadil is kind of like comes strolling in with a bunch of swords. He's like. A bunch of elves gave me these! And he just, like, starts smacking down uh, British field zombies. And that's, like, the swords that they all carry around forever. Uh, like, a Sting comes from this. I know Sting comes from the, the Hobbit. But, like, uh, Pippin's sword, and I think Glamdring, uh, Gandalf's sword comes from this encounter. Anyway, they just totally come around to the movies. It's a great decision, because how the hell do you do that? I always liked Tom right. Bombadil. He's weird though. The best, like, like well, it sounds like a bad character. This sounds so, like, Tolkien. From how you've described it, this sounds like something I don't want. It Tolkien. I had, like your decisions on these colors here, with the black wrap. Thank you. I'm enjoying it too. I think it turned out well. Uh, the thing about Tolkien is he's inventing a genre, right? So you kind of have to, like forgive him what he hasn't thought of yet, and what the thing that Tolkien never thought of was editing, or pacing. Because he's working off of Anglo-Saxon, like, like uh, uh, verbally passed down and, like, runically inscribed tales that are just totally different cultural, like, cadences and, like, what they consider a story. So The Lord of the Rings is difficult, actually. It's pretty difficult to get through. Um, but it did so much for so many people, including me. I read all of the Narnia books. That is a less rewarding decision, I feel like. Why? I love the Narnia books. I, I read all of them too, and I can point out, like I don't know, like three scenes in my entire head from like any of them that aren't the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or the Magician's Nephew, which I read a bunch. I remember Horse and His Boy really was like. Meh. Oh, uh, I love the Horse and His Boy. Prince Caspian was pretty good. Voyage of the Dawn. Voyage to the Dawn. Yeah, that's my favorite. Best one. Best one. Silver, Silver Chair, Chair is really, really cool. Too. Silver Chair is, I think, thematically the correct uh, like hipster best book pick. Um, uh, my best book is actually the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Voyage of the Dawn Treader is it's amazing. Prince Caspian's not bad. Prince Caspian, I think, gets they there. all shine in different ways, really. Except for the Last Voyage, which I just never wanted to read again. Oops. The Last Battle. See, didn't even get to the battle part. And Magician's Nephew is really good. Magician's Nephew is very good. I think about the Last Battle all the uh, time. Magician's actually. Nephew is prequel. It is. It's a zero. How oh, I love the magician's nephew. Does it get around the the bad prequel stuff? What does it do right? Um, so I analyze. It is. It has no, like the 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 characters we follow mm -hmm. are not known in the rest of the books. Mm -hmm. Except like, the one, huh? Well, except the one. Right. Well, I mean, like uh, the two, huh? There's the witch. No, no, no. Those are characters we meet. On the journey. Yeah. You just mean, like, the, the, the POV characters? Right. Yeah, to totally unrelated. So, like, um, we don't know what we're getting into mm -hmm. as an audience, right? And, like, that's the way you should do prequels, in my uh -huh. opinion. Is, like, you need to prequel, but you can't, like... Like, you can't make a prequel about um, the Little Mermaid. You cannot prequel the Little Mermaid in a world where music is outlawed. Uh, because we've seen The Little Mermaid, and we know that there is no tension in this movie because we know that music is not going to be outlawed, uh, or that The Little Mermaid will not be dead before the next movie starts. I, I understand this as a, as, a, as a very baseline functional argument. I think, for me, there's so much in storytelling that doesn't isn't, that isn't just did they win or, or did they die. Like, 
uh, I think the prequels are really interesting, uh, like good prequels, which I will very much agree are rare. Right. Uh, they do things like uh, when you start them, the characters you know should be so different you don't recognize them. Yes. It's about creating the characters you know. Right. Um, uh, or seeing that's that's the real value is seeing what like, if they because I also like uh, unrelated like how did this world get like this but let's follow it from a different perspective those are great but if we're going to see characters we've seen before they need to be it needs to be an important story to tell about that character and that means they need to have been different and changed into who we know sure I like um, that. that that's a good answer too I think that like it's important that like if like characters that we know already do fine are mm-hmm. going to be in the next like because you don't, you can't, in a movie essence, like in a book essence, it could be probably different, mm-hmm. but like in the movie medium, like there needs to be tension in the conflict, right? So uh, if we are following the characters that we know are in the next one, there's no tension. But like, I, I, you could prequel The Godfather mm-hmm. as long as you set it on different Corleones, right? Do you think, like you can, like you can prequel anything, like you could prequel Harry Potter. Do if think, we don't set it on any of the characters that we know already from Harry Potter, so if we were to center it around, I don't know, Benedict Cumberbatch and Eddie Redmayne, who have never been uh, I, in Harry Potter. I understand that you're, uh, you're. I think you're referencing a uh, uh, Fantastic Beast. And how to but get all of them? I'm just pretending that you're referencing Benedict Cumberbatch, Human Wizard. Right. And Eddie Redmayne, presumably Human Wizard, because that would explain a lot. Um, I I feel like there's a good exception to this. Like, something... I, I, have, I have to think about it, because, like... Or, well, so there's... Uh, oh, so, my gosh. Quick pause in your argument. We'll get right back to it. Can you show us that Bumblebee top? Yes. Is we will definitely be putting these on at least Yay. Rachel's art Instagram, Art of Con, two ends. Um, oh, it's so good. <coughs> do you like it? Choked up. I do like it. I'm still not happy with every aspect of it. What are you not happy with? Um, the face skin the is face green. Skin is green. I don't. Oh, I see. In your screen, it looks a bit. It's it's very much olive. It's all different. I mean, yeah. you're right to get on olive here. Well, it looks fine. Oh, oh very green. Too green. So continue it? Side possibility. A mix between the two. Right. Um, uh, a character whose arc is uh, more or less done in the first one. Uh, a side character being put as the main character. Like, so, uh, this is obviously, it wasn't actually a prequel, but how many people experienced it. Um, Bilbo from Lord of the Rings into The Hobbit right. is an interesting story. Right. Because it's like, what, what the hell happened here? This, this gives us something like, there's a tension because we don't know what caused it or exactly like how it could have like it's obviously like a big deal but like what was the big deal right actually I think that uh, like cinematically The Hobbit coming last mm-hmm. I think that is like the thing that does work from the Hobbit movies the most right yeah it's like they're like this is the story of Bilbo Baggins and everybody's like oh that old guy who seems eccentric and it's like nope he's this shut in right and it's just like Oh really? No. This is that. This is the the gotta be a completely different person. Yeah. Um. There's so much about the Hobbit movies. It's actually so good. It's just it's just so. And then there's so much that's just like, did you see it with the increased frame rate? I didn't. I saw it in 3D at 24 frames per second, which is the wrong way to do both of those things. I went and saw the increased frame rate version. Mm-hmm. There were a couple times where I had to look down. I don't get motion sick too much. Like, right. But, like, that was a little intense. That, it, was, those, it was... Them eagles? It was... It was freaky. Mm-hmm. It, it was... Specifically, Desolation of Smaug was the one that came out, and they tried out that, like, high frame rate. Yeah. I'm always... I'm always ready to try a gimmick. Sure. Anything to save the theater, right? Except, um, buying tickets regularly. Yep. Uh, dude, do you know how many tickets I have banked up on my Cinemark app right nice. now? Nice. Oh. I, I got one for my birthday at Alamo on March 12th, so. Oops. Oops. Bad time to be born. Yep, bad time to be born. 
so I'm just making her skin less olivey. What time is it? Oh, it's 10. It's 10. So, we are close to being done. I love done. the outfits, though. I think yeah, the outfit is really is cool. This so much... Oh my I gosh. never and could design clothes like this. In, it yeah. twisted into pink. It kind of looks mm-hmm. butterfly like oh, I, right. the butterfly wing thing going on. Um, it's... This is uh, everything that the that the prompt asked for, but I could never have designed this. Figure it out. What do you think? Is this everything you hoped for? It's, or at least something you hoped for? <laughs> is this hope? Is this eyes? Ah, oh, so many eyes. Oh, so many eyes. Ah, uh, hands. I still don't think she looks quite gothic enough. Like, I, the face needs redoing a little. I mean, People can be gothic even no matter what shape their face is. Little Pink Bowser says, yeah, clothes are well done, especially the pink blend over the top. Figurative IQ says, I love it. Yay. I'm pretty sure it's figurative first question. Oh. What? One Q. One Q has to be like Q1, right? Like question one. I read that one as an I. I, I, get, I think it is probably like imitating an I, but I see through its wise tricks, and I know that it is a moth and not tree bark. It's an I. I no, no, I did it wrong. I have a friend who uses a one as an I. And, oh, that did it. The lips? Yeah. I think the lips look good. I don't know why it's so pixelated. Probably because I kept shrinking her head. <laughs> and I'm really zoomed in. But we're getting these shapes back the way I want them. Yeah, that's better. Little Pink Bowser says Leet. Leet. Um, she looks really similar to Esmeralda. Does Esmeralda have a pink headscarf? No, I think it's red. I feel like I need to give her some kind of weird eye makeup. How about just like big red axes? Green. Boom, boom. Ooh, I like it. Oh, this is great. A little gold on the inner corner. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that looks good. Looks really good from far away. <laughs> Let's do some. No, not orange blush. What do I want? White. I want like some highlights. Highlights. Let's do edge control. I do no. IQ, but Twitch did a Twitch thing, and so I had to change account name. I see. Or I one C. I feel that. The one thing I hate most is that YouTube, when it f- like firmed with Google, mm-hmm. it made me switch my name to my real name. Yep. And now and I, I hate it. Everybody knows that your first name is not also. Yeah. All of China knows that I am there. Two. Be there <laughs> also. Esmeralda does have a pink hair thingy. Rachel, is this plagiarism? No. Butterfly name. <laughs> is this a plagiarism? Is this a plagiarism? Um, I think I should change the headband color in that case. No, 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 it was a joke. It wasn't even said in chat, it was us. No, oh, I know, I, no, I'm not, Listen. like, worried about plagiarism, I just don't want it to be the same hair color as Esmeralda. Maybe they all get their hair bands at the same place in their traveling country. Oh, well, the gold is nice. Yeah, the gold pink, looks better, I gold. think, actually. She's got kind of, like, a gold down to pink thing going on. <sighs> It was like, um, I, from the actual Hunchback of Notre Dame movie, mm-hmm. the Disney one, mm-hmm. I know Hellfire, mm-hmm. and then, um, I know, uh, uh, only the last note of Heaven's Light, mm-hmm. uh, cause it's like the only note that matters in that whole song, cause that song is sort of like, mm-hmm. So, oh, I guess like it's okay. It's like oh, there. We yeah. Are. What? So, anyways, and then uh. That's a different one. Yeah, it is a different one, isn't it? Hmm? It's someday out there. All I ask is it's one, one to gladly you walk up. I don't think there are that many songs. And then there is like the beginning, on. like overture thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, bells like, of Notre Dame. I can't tell you any of the words. The fisherman fishes. The baker man bakes. On the, on the streets, streets of, of Notre Dame. And then from there, I go immediately to uh, the French uh, mm-hmm. opera, which we watched many times in uh, Mademoiselle Dong's class in high school. And uh, that, that musical, it is incredible. 
Like you know what is absolutely an utter wreck in a mess? What? The original novel. It's all over the place. It's a somebody important wrote it. Victor, Victor Hugo. Hugo. Yeah. Victor Same guy as Les Mis. Yeah. Uh, and a lot I've of this. Heard. He so he wrote uh, Notre Dame because he wanted people to appreciate Gothic Gothic architecture. So the the cathedral is a character. It's also I think it was serialized. It definitely like a lot of what he wrote. It definitely feels serialized because it just it, it, like you can read the plot summary. It's like a soap opera. Like there's so well, many like, twists and turns. Les you Mis have is is yeah. It just keeps going. Really it, bad as a novel. It's so it's, it's genius long. in the opposite direction. It's, it's filled with essays and the essays are genius and the plot is there to kind of like present these essays. Right. Like half of Les Mis is about the Napoleonic Wars. And uh, like like. All of the plot is moved by. I've heard like all the plot is just moved by convenience. That's not that unusual for this it's, period of writing. It's just like literally like I mean like it's it's pretty obvious like in the musical that like things are pretty convenient mm. for the plot, but like like literally just like Javert and Jean Valjean just actually just keep running into each other and like leaving places like seconds before each other. Well, so there's there's two two different ways to take all the this as, as, as in writing, right? The the second one I think is kind of the more important one. Um, it's a lot of these convenient uh, misstep, missteps. I don't feel like you need to take them super literally when presented with them. It's just like a convenience for storytelling. Like the big one was uh, when a character in Game of Thrones uh, is set to like is supposed to watch this one window for like a week, and if a candle shows up on the window, she has to go rescue the person. So then she decides it's never going to happen. She turns away, and of course the candle pops up right after she leaves, right? Yeah. I don't feel like we ne- need to necessarily take that as uh, the super literalist, uh, like, I mean, obviously it's shown happening that way, but I think it's, you know, for storytelling purposes, we just need to know that it happened after she left. The other one, and this is the one that's more relevant to Les Mis, um, is it's different when your work is about providence. Right, exactly. If, you're, if, your, point, if your point you're trying to make is God did it, um, yeah. And you get to have lots of God did it moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, 18th century lit- or 19th century literature, like uh, Charles Dickens and everything, and Victor Hugo, uh, a lot of the characters are interconnected in ways that are not normal. Like, like, like all of Great Expectations is and and stuff, A Tale of Two Cities, all has insane interconnectedness, and that's almost like like the denou- like the I don't know if it's the point, but like. It there, it's just a feature of that era of writing. It was just like the hyper complicated, complicated. Yeah, like plot. the the, inter, the the insanely intertwining plot that you don't find out until like right. the last it, two chapters actually, is true. Like so and so was the secret brother of this person who had been abusing this person the whole time, and now like that heroes. the family thing like, is so revealed, you're actually, like heartbroken. And because what is heroes trying? It to, teaches why? like the villains the lesson because of that. Right. Like why does heroes do that? Because it's comic books, right? It's it's based off of like superheroes, right? Right. Les Mis and all these are all uh, like Dickens was serialized stories. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, all it like sense. a. It's you all need. You need them to buy you, the next. You issue. need the, it's it's hooks, right? It's just it's just popular entertainment. It's like Dickens was hyper wealthy. He was a, a he was a hot stuff because he just like, kept selling books. Um, Les Mis, I or Victor Hugo, I'm not actually sure. Anyway, also it's just it's just horrifyingly sad. Like it, ev- nobody wins in Hunchback. Literally yes, nobody. No, nobody wins. And and I think it's worth pointing out that Frollo and and the priest are two separate characters in that. Like they got wait or they're yes they're no no they're they're the the same character right the same actor no I mean like they're the same person like Frollo and the bishop got separated out in the Disney movie but they were actually like the same dude or something like that in the book maybe maybe I'm remembering it wrong he's awful I know but like yeah okay and then Phoebus is is also bad Phoebus is oh. my least favorite Disney prince in the entire world. There's no single sentence he says that relates to any other single sentence he says. He only quips. Every single one is a, is a stinger. stinger. I literally couldn't tell you anything he says, except I think he might at one point say, well, maybe we shouldn't burn down all of Paris. I literally think that's all he says. No, he has so many quips. It's something like, you know, Disney my name movie? is Phoebus. Yeah, it's the so name many. Of God. Does he really say that? Yeah. He says uh, tons of stuff. I he's couldn't tell you He's like the quippiest he Disney prince. You must have not watched the movie for recently. I have, I have watched the movie before. Phoebus, it's like, it's like, anybody remember the Gargoyles? No, you can't say yes to this. Oh, I actually can remember the Gargoyles. Oh. The Gargoyles, they're one of them wants to be with the pigeon. That's his character. Oh, Tesla. And then uh, there's the old one, mm-hmm. and he talks like he's old. 
And then there's the other one. I think one. that's a girl gargoyle. There's an old man and an old woman gargoyle. The old woman gargoyle mm. is the one who gets to say things that are relevant to the plot. The other two just have to paste out the, the jokes. Oh, quasi. Yeah, I'm Laverne. Whatever. In my head, she just sounds like Princess Carolyn, which I don't think is right, but I'm going to keep that. Bojack! Um, oh, man, that was pretty spot on there, actually. Thanks! Uh, we can all agree that Hellfire is the best Disney villain song. Don't at me. I. It's a it's strong. Definitely contest. good, but it's, is it be prepared? Is it Let It Go? Let it go, let it go. Is it You're Welcome? I am one with the wind and sky. Great opinion. Um, I... Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Everyone is the bad guy in Moana except Moana. Yeah, maybe. Sure. Moana's not super great. Moana is good. She's like... Her dad's like, the yo, is- hey, if you go out past the waves, you're gonna, you're gonna get killed. And then she steals a magic boat. She is, is the boat magic? Herself, excuse me. Uh, uh, the water calls to her. Yeah, but like, I've been staring at, at the, the edge, edge of, of the water, water long as, as I can remember, remember never really knowing why. why. Yeah, sorry, no. I, I wish I, no, I think Moana is great. I could I, um, be yeah, the perfect, perfect daughter. daughter. It is kind then of like, I come like, back to the water. A story of everyone sucks. Which makes me think that they definitely did their research on mythology, because most of the time in mythology, everyone sucks. I, I agree that I think that Maui is like, like you you've met you've met your hero, and they suck. Mm-hmm. Very much. And like I feel like uh, Maui is just like another reason that like the world is keeping Moana down. Maui is just the world is keeping Moana down. Like it's it's like. It's like, oh, you know, Maui is, like, this big legend. Oh, sure, yeah. God, and, like, you know, he'll save us, don't worry. You know, and she, like, meets him and wants to help him, but he's like, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna be half a shark person. Right, I think... I lost my hook to a crab. It's interesting, um, it's the same thing as Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. Maui is Don't Meet Your Heroes, but, like... Same, uh, same, it's the, it's the, I failed, now I'm just living as a hermit, and I'm gonna do weird stuff until, uh, we decide to win instead. I, a whole other stream could be us talking mm-hmm. about Last Jedi, because I love Last Jedi. Brave opinions only here. Um. I think we're mostly done here. Cool. With this, with this drawing. How do we think it, how do we think it looks? Maple syrup plus, gave plus, us, plus. uh, some dragon hearts with rainbows Aww. on them. Oh, yay. Um, be prepared is my favorite. Somebody said shiny. Can't stand shiny. I like the song. I like the song. I wish the song had less intermission so I could just listen to it. It's also a, uh, it's a, because the whole thing is... is, it, is, a Tim, is it Tim Curry or is it a Tim no, Curry? It's Jermaine Wanna Clement be. from Flight of the Concords. Oh, that makes so much sense. And he's doing, um, uh... A, a David Bowie David impression? Bowie. He's doing David Bowie. He's doing David Bowie, okay. So, Jermaine Clement plus David Bowie equals Tim Curry. I will accept that equation. Yeah. Wait, shut my blasphemous mouth? What did I say? Ricky, oh. don't, don't bait the stream. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't bait the stream when we're 15 minutes over. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Oh, I like the purple splash. Me too. I think this one turned out dope. I agree. This one is dope. I am going to call it dope. I'm going to go on the dope. Okay. Train. How many dopes out of out of seven? Dope. That's a that's a lot. Of dope, dope out of seven. That's a lot. Yeah. Rachel, how many dopes out of seven? Um, I'll say uh, five. Five dopes out of seven. I'm gonna have to give this a perfect five <laughs> dopes out of seven. <laughs> Yay. I'm proud of this. I think it came out really well. You're so good at arting. Yeah. By the way, oh, I do no. I do take commissions. Um, if you want to commission me at Art of Con, my yeah yeah, you hear that? His name. Hit her up. You can see what you can do. That's what us lathering at her when she does like she just sit down and then works. It's maybe we're part of the success. Yeah, I actually like drawing with you guys talking ah, in the background. See, part of the equation. It's kind of hard to actually maintain a conversation and draw at the same time, like to maintain a meaningful conversation with the chat, so I'm glad you guys are here. Our conversation is, uh... I don't know if I like the white spots. Oh, yeah, I I guess. Only as meaningful as lame is. Take it as you will. No, I like the halo. The halo is better. I'm on the verge of being cancelled. 
link that stuff. So we are on, you are on what, Rachel? I'm on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is Art of Con. I ends. think, I don't know if it has periods or not. I think Let it me did. check it out. But you should sign it all. Yeah, okay, it has periods. I will sign it. Here is where you can find me, and please subscribe, or whatever, follow, at art dot of dot con. Follow the gamer Gary says it does have periods because they are already following you. Oh yay. Thank you for the follow. Hope you enjoy it. And this is going out to the the uh, IQ figurative figuratively IQ. Yes. Yes. They will be able to find it on your Instagram, so go ahead and leave a follow and a nice like and uh, comments. I don't know. Uh, smash that like button. I think on Instagram you just uh, you make sure you click the notification icon so you can join the first gang. I think you just just gossip. It's just it's all gossiping. It's a gossip based economy. Gossip based economy. I wonder if this turned out. Did this turn out sufficiently gothic looking? Gothic. I think there is a gothic look in here for sure. This is like it depends on like exactly where you draw your line. This it this, won't let you uh, post links in the chat box. This oh. reads very very uh, uh, late emo early scene to me, but I don't think that's not gothic. Oh, I think this is great. That the eyeliner. Hmm. Yeah. Did you okay. Put the circle around everybody's heads. No, but I like to. It's so. very cute. Thank you. It's pastel goth. That's correct. It is pastel goth. Yes. Okay. Alrighty, folks. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, I really um, appreciate it. Sorry if I didn't get to your drawing. It took me longer than I thought to do three. I did. Uh, right. Plus the amazing. Uh, put that Joe. Put that Joe exotic back up there. Let the people. Our see. new permanent technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, it gets better every time we tap back to it. <laughs> I want you. I to forgot about the damaged logo. Please the damaged uh, tiger. You should, uh, that. It, have you given him? Uh, <laughs> have you given him Travis's or uh, tattoos? Travis's tattoos. Like the the little tiger. I thought he had, I, I saw like a half sleeve on him. You should. He's wearing actual like a shirt. Uh, is that not Pex? Anyway, I wasn't paying attention during this part. Um, this is based on his mugshot. Oh man. Please bear with us. During I just audio need to issues. like the Ricky picture. There's no pictures of me on your Instagram. There is. There oh. is a picture of your head as a pumpkin. Oh yeah, that's right. That's a pretty photorealistic depiction of Ricky, I think. It's, it's actually it's, insanely Like, good. that's better than courtroom paintings. Thank you. I think I should get a job as a courtroom painter. Then and I can get, paint Tiger King all I want. Or just make them all out of pumpkins is, I think, the implication. Oh. He needs more it? face tattoos. Does he no, have any face tattoos? He's been Snapchatted. It's, it's a, it's a, he's been, um... He's filtered himself. Yeah, he's all, he's all facetuned. Look at that beautiful, creamy complexion. Yeah. All six of them, somehow. Yeah. Um, it's so you feel better about bearing with him during his audio issues. There. <laughs> He's got that tiger knife at his face, and, and that bitch Carol Baskin's in the back. You can see her. Spooky. She's Shame. Hovering. All right, guys. We will catch you on... Thursday. 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 I thought it was... We'll be, uh, uh, well, I'm going to be teaching uh, Ian how to how to melee. Cool. Cool. I'm excited for this. I would love to know exactly how bad I suck at melee after all these years of thinking I was okay. Oh, that man. bitch Carol Baskin. I, I, I did not. Oh, we should play a game blind then. A game of what? We should play like our first couple of games blind. Yeah. yeah I think before it's, lessons. Yeah. Just, like, you got to see what, you have to see what I as a student am made of. Like just what, what, right. what, clay you have to work with it's not yep. a lot of clay um anyway <laughs> that's on thursday at seven um rachel you're amazing yeah thank you rachel thanks. you're the best you're just, you're the really most glad. talented person who streams for us oh that's really yeah, sweet yeah you have actual useful talent wow. and you use them for us which is just oh so how nice guys um i really love drawing and thanks for giving me a platform to do it thanks for sending me prompts oh bye, bye. bye.